What's going on everybody on YouTube land and welcome back to a new episode of GBA. In this episode we are going to be doing a new mail call video but this one is a little bit different and it does mean something to me. Um, so I am a little bit ashamed to admit this to start out with but I actually currently have no Atari 2600 games in my collection. So one of the things I wanted to show you guys was my current Atari 2600 console that I have. I've had this console in my collection for about seven years or, or so now. Um, and I would say it's probably about two to three years ago I decided to sell off all of my Atari 2600 games. They were just collecting dust and I didn't really play them. I didn't have a whole lot to begin with, but I did get rid of all of them. I ended up keeping the console because I knew that I would get some Atari 2600 games again eventually. Um, because I do have some nostalgia for this system. Basically, the reason why I feel a little bit embarrassed by this is because my first gaming memories came off of the Atari 2600. Being almost 40 years old, I was, uh, you know, growing up in the era where the Atari 2600 was at its peak of popularity. I was born in 1982, and my family didn't get an NES until 1987, towards the end of 1987. So my first gaming memories were of the 2600, and to a lesser extent, the Vectrex. My dad also had a Vectrex when I was a kid, but I didn't get to play that as much. But yeah, so that's a little bit of the context out of the way. Um, I just didn't play the games any more um, as far as recently goes. But here lately I've been really wanting to pick up some Atari 2600 games, so I've been keeping an eye on a lot of the auctions out there and different things like that. So I came across this auction, and um, this guy was selling 15 Atari 2600 games, and he had it starting out at like 10 bucks. He was a new seller to eBay. So I watched it, and I ended up winning these games for $15, which is really a still, um, especially when you guys see what I got out of the lot. Um, so, you know, if you guys are looking to get some deals on eBay, always try to find sellers that have low feedback scores. A lot of people will shy away from buying from them, but, you know, with eBay's money-back guarantees and, you know, the buyer's always right, you can get your money back if anything negative happens. So that's an easy way to find some deals on eBay if you guys are looking for them. But yeah, so the guy shipped all 15 games in this envelope. Not the best way to ship these games, but like I said, he was a new seller. And these Atari 2600 games, they should be able to hold up from a little bit of, you know, wear and tear or whatnot. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and let's open up these Atari 2600 games and let's see what we got. I'll keep you guys posted on the ones that I had when I was young or the ones I had experience with when I was young. And uh, I'll tell you guys if I know nothing about the games whatsoever. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's cut this open. Let's see what we got in this package. Should be a total of 15 games. And there was a good mix of games that I had when I was a kid. And a good mix of games that I've heard of over the years that I wanted to have in the collection. Alright, so... Once you cut the tape, and we're just going to pull these out randomly and see what we got here. So first one out is... Yar's Revenge. So, this is definitely one that I knew of when I was a kid. I never actually owned this game, but I did play it a lot at friends' house and stuff. Um, and I do consider Yar's Revenge as one of the uh, best Atari 2600 games out there. A lot of people don't really know that uh, the guy who created Yar's Revenge also created E.T., which is, you know, typically considered one of the worst games of all time and started the video game crash. But yeah, it's funny how a guy could go from creating Yar's Revenge to go to create E.T. But realistically though, you know, he just didn't have enough time to really code E.T. properly. That's my opinion at least. But yeah, first game out of the uh, bag is Yar's Revenge on the Atari 2600. Alright, so moving right along, what do we got next? We'll take this one out. Okay, so we have Codebreaker. Um, this is one of the ones I know nothing about, so if you guys know anything about this, please let me know down in the comments. It looks like one of those combo cartridges that has multiple games on it. But yeah, so we've got Codebreaker. And also, in the pictures, all these look like they were in pretty good condition, which is always a positive for games that are over 40 years old. Or right around 40. Alright, so next up... We have a classic. So we've got the original Pitfall by Activision. 
So Pitfall is a very interesting game. It is uh, one of the first games I ever played that uh, basically utilized multiple screens. You know, back in the day, a lot of Atari 2600 games took place on one screen. So it was kind of neat to see a game that took place on multiple screens. You know, going back, not the best game in the world by today's standards whatsoever, but back then this was pretty revolutionary. But yeah, Pitfall, awesome game to uh, add to the collection. It was one of the ones I was looking forward to the most out of this lot. Alright, so next up, we have uh, Combat. So, I mean, everybody knows what Combat is. Um, to be honest with you, this is a great two-player game. I actually still um, enjoy this to this day. And I know I said I sold a bunch of my Atari games, or all of them, but I still play some of the Atari 2600 games, uh, typically on my arcade machine through emulation. And Combat is still a fun two-player game to go back to today. So yeah, this one has its end label too. You know, some of these labels are coming up a little bit, but to me that's to be expected. So yeah, definitely a cool one to add, and one I had and loved when I was a kid. Alright, so next up we have Sword Quest Earth World. So I'm not really particularly familiar with this game either. Is this that one that they had a, a series of games and a contest back in the day? Uh, where you could win like prizes and stuff? I'm not sure. This one is missing the end label there. But this could be one of those uh, competitions they were running. Let me know down in the comments if I'm correct or if I'm wrong. I think it was a series of games that you could play and you could win like prizes or whatnot. But yeah, still happy to get it and excited to put it in and see what it's like. You gotta love the uh, classic artwork on these cartridges. Back then you had to have a good imagination to play these games. Alright, so next up, we have another favorite of mine when I was a kid. Probably, honestly, my favorite um, Atari 2600 game. And one of the reasons why I love shooters to this day. So we have Activision River Raid. Anytime I'm playing Atari 2600 games um, through emulation today, I always, always start up and play River Raid. This is a fantastic game. It's a really fun shooter. And like I said, I, this started my love for that genre, and it's carried on my whole entire life. All right, so next up, we have another arcade classic here. We have Cubert. Now, I've, I, I can't honestly say if I've played the Atari 2600 version of Cubert, but throughout the years I've played Cubert many, many times. So I'm sure this is probably similar to the uh, old arcade version or whatnot. But happy to get it, and I'm really excited to put this in and see how it stacks up to some of the other versions. So yeah, Cubert for the 2600. Alright, so next up, we have... Uh, Subscan. Not really particularly sure what this game is. Pretty cool artwork there, though. And uh, it's got Sega branding on the back of the cartridge there. So yeah, Subscan. And I must admit, I'm not really the biggest like historian on Atari, on Atari games or whatnot. So some of these might not even be Atari games. I'm not particularly sure because... You know, a lot of these are different sizes and stuff, so these might go to some of the other consoles of the generation too, I'm not sure. But if you guys know if any of these are not Atari 2600 games, please let me know. But yeah, subscan on the 2600, I think. Pretty cool to see a Sega branded cart like that though. Alright, so next up we have another arcade classic, and I had this game when I was a kid and I played the crap out of it. So we have Space Invaders. Not Space Invaders. Yeah, Space Invaders. I'm so sorry. Back in the day. And, you know, like I said, I had this game. This game played really well on the Atari 2600, in my opinion. But yeah, very happy to get Space Invaders for the uh, collection. Alright, so next up, we have another Activision cart here. So we have Mega Mania, a Space Nightmare. Yeah, I know nothing about this game whatsoever, 
So if you guys have played this or know anything about it, please let me know. But I mean, it looks pretty neat. I like the uh, artwork on the cartridge and stuff. Looks like something I could have fun with. And like I said, it's an Activision game, so it can't be too bad. Alright, so next up we have another Activision game here. And another one I know nothing about. We have Star Master. Let me know if you guys have played Star Master and if this is any good. So yeah, I kind of like how these have the gameplay on the cartridge. So at least you're not disappointed when you get home and you put it in. Pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. Alright, so next up, we have one that I was really happy to get in this lot. I know nothing about this, but I'm pretty sure it's probably a terrible game, but I just wanted it because of, you know, the history of it. But we have Superman on the Atari 2600. So as you guys know, most Superman games are bad, so I'm pretty sure this one probably is too. But uh, this has no end label on it. But still, I just think it's really cool to see Superman on an Atari cart. So yeah, happy to get this and happy to add it. If you guys have played this, let me know if this is as bad as I think it is. Alright, so we're getting down to the bottom here. But next up we have another arcade classic. Um, I did play this one as a kid too, and I remember having a lot of fun with this. We have Defender. Once again, you know, arcade classic. Back in the day on these home consoles, it was all about the arcade games coming home, and you can't do much better than Defender. Feels like we've got two games left. So next up, this one says Coleco on it, so I know this is not an Atari. I'm guessing it's not an Atari game. It doesn't look like one, but still happy to get this. This is actually an Intellivision game. It says it right on the uh, cover here. But we've got Donkey Kong. Another arcade classic. So, I mean, you know, it, like I said, it's not an Atari 2600 game, but Intellivision's cool, right? Uh, let me know if you guys are going to pick up the Amico when it comes out. Uh, I think I'm probably going to get one. But yeah, happy to get Donkey Kong on the Intellivision. Alright, so last up, what do we finish this with? We actually finished this with one of my favorite uh, games when I was a kid. So this is another arcade classic. We have Missile Command. Missile Command is an absolutely fantastic game. Very simple premise. Uh, the gameplay is pretty simplistic, but it is so much fun trying to get high scores in this game. So there's the end label. Like I said, you gotta love Missile Command. It's all about them old arcade games. So yeah, guys, that is it. That is the 15 games I won in that lot for $15. And I'm happy to start this Atari 2600 collection again. I don't plan on ever really getting rid of these games again. So I definitely appreciate you guys coming along on this journey with me and uh, taking a look at what I picked up. But guys... Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this pickup. Did you think these games were worth $15? What was your favorite game in the lot? Uh, do you guys have any Atari 2600 games? Let me know. I'd love to have a little conversation with you guys. But I think I'm going to go open up some more boxes, maybe play some of these Atari games, try to enjoy the rest of my evening. I hope you do too. So until next time, everyone, I'll see you later.